A's Cast returns here with A's manager Mark Kotze. Kotze, thanks for joining me today. Well, it's a pleasure, Jess. Thanks for having me. <laughs> you know, it's your second season with managerial duties. How are you feeling? You know, it's a good question. Uh, it's a big question to start out with, really, because, um, you know, where we're at in the season, um, you know, ultimately we'd like to be in a better position uh, in the month of September. And, um, you know, so for me as a manager, I evaluate myself, and based on wins and losses, it's it's difficult, um, you know, but as a group collectively, uh, from April to uh, September, I think you know, this, this club's improved. There's been some changes. Um, you know, as most people who are familiar with the A's and follow the A's understand that, uh, you know, we're in a difficult situation. We're navigating through that with, uh, with a lot of youth um, at the major league level. And uh, at times that can be challenging, but also at times it's, it's very rewarding. And some of these improvements, for me, when I watch this team, defensively, I think the team is night and day compared to starting out the season. Pitching is certainly improved and hitting. Talk to me about some of those improvements that you've noticed. I think the biggest thing um, from where we were in April is really on the mound. Um, you know, we struggled tremendously in April um, to throw strikes, to get outs, and to be competitive, really. And, um, you know, I know our pitching coaches, Scott Emerson, Mike McCarthy, uh, made a lot of changes. Uh, also with personnel, we've made changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've seen, you know, a young pitcher like J.P. Sears uh, really um, you know, make the adjustments necessary to have success at the major league level, consistent success. You know, the wins and loss record won't show up, but mm -hmm. if you look deeper than that, this kid's really come a long way from April. And I think you can say that about Ken Waldachuk as well. You know, Luis Medina coming here with zero experience in the major leagues. So we started out really young, and I think we're still young, but there's more and more experience as we get further into this that they've made adjustments, they've learned that execution is important. Uh, defensively, we've cleaned up a lot of mistakes, but we've become a little more athletic, um, you know, on the field with, with Zach Geloff joining us and Lawrence Butler. Um, so, yeah, I think, um, you know, the improvements that, that that you've seen that you're talking about um, you know we, we hope that uh, uh, we can only you know, get better um, and uh, on the offensive side uh, you know it's been a challenge um, but I think they've also made uh, a lot of improvement there as well and you mentioned the young guys and specifically Butler and Geloff you went down to Arizona to meet some of them and just really get to know them how can you kind of evaluate from the moment you met them down in Arizona to now, like Lawrence Butler had a fast track to the bigs, but they kind of showed up and they came as advertised, not just with the numbers, but who they are as a, as a person and a player, really showing up as Major League Baseball players. How can you evaluate what they've been doing? Well, I think the time in Arizona spent with them uh, was really to start the relationship and make the connection. Um, I furthered that in spring training with them being around the club and um, getting a chance to, to play. Uh, in some spring training games before you know they were optioned down and really for Lawrence Butler uh, the message in Arizona was that you know you've got all the tools it takes to play at the major league level uh, the speed the power uh, you know the ability to hit and make contact and uh, the same for Zach really um, you know these two young men are they're, they're quality young men that um, not only come as advertised like you talked about mm -hmm. with, with their work ethic and their tools but um, you know, as people, and uh, that's important as well. But, um, you know, you, you look out on the field and you look at a Jordan Diaz who, you know, um, is making improvements, making strides, transition to third base and playing there regularly. And, you know, Nick Allen solidifying a little bit better shortstop position. Um, you know, Ryan Noda, let's talk about Ryan Noda, you know, rule five draft pick that, that's really stepped in and solidified first base. Um, so there's definitely pieces here that, you know, you want to make connections with and establish them as early as possible with those relationships. And I think that was the, the whole mindset for me this offseason. Tell me a little bit more about Noda because he gets on base, which is very much the A's mentality that they love. But I just watch him from the clubhouse perspective and just how much he gets along with the guy. Just very much a well-rounded player. And when he was injured, you felt it when he was gone. Tell me about the impressive stuff that he's put up this season. Yeah, you know, Ryan, in terms of the beginning of the year, I think Ryan has always been a guy on his team that was able to be a leader, um, you know, and coming through the minor leagues. And when you get to the big leagues, it's, it's a little more challenging to be that leader as a young player, as a first-year player, walking in a clubhouse, 
uh, with the likes of at the time it was you know Jesus Aguilar, uh, Lemus Diaz, Jace Peterson, some some older guys really that, that took that leadership role and um, you know since Jace and since Aggie have been gone and obviously it takes a certain level of success to step in and be that leader and I think Ryan's kind of felt that of late that he can be a little more vocal and he can be a guy to bring guys together and I think this young nucleus is uh, is doing some things that are pretty special right now um, in the clubhouse, off the field, you know, visiting the hospitals, going out and doing some charity work together, and really that builds a culture that, uh, for me, uh, one that leads to success. Tell me about the A's culture because you used to be out there playing yourself, and heading into the season, heading into the last season, a big mission for you was to create the A's culture, almost like revamp it in a way. Do you think you've established that and what does it mean to, to define A's culture? Yeah, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that I need to reestablish it because Bob Melvin did such a great job mm -hmm. here with, with you know really building the confidence in how the A's operate, how you do things and you know for me it was a continuation really and, and the leader of that last year was, was Stephen Vogt and uh, you know Stephen was a lifelong A mm -hmm. and uh, who doesn't believe in Stephen Vogt <laughs> right so um, he really helped solidify that last year and this year the transition took place we had a lot of new faces here to this organization and trying to send that message in spring training of what it means to be an A and what it's like to be an A and you know this place is special to me because like you said, I played here, mm -hmm. and I kind of grew up here in the middle of my career with a lot of success. It was the first team I came to that I made the postseason with. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I understand how it's you know you, you you go out and play the game, and you don't worry about anything else. And and when you're successful, this is the greatest place to play in, in the big leagues with the fan support. Mm -hmm. It's it's a, it's an unbelievable environment. It's one that uh, you know we have felt this season in certain aspects. Um, you know, even though it was a reverse boycott, the place was packed. We played great. We beat Tampa, who was the first place team, and you could feel the energy in here. Even though thus the team's you know chance were to sell the team, but when we took the momentum and we took the lead and felt the support, it was great. Yeah, it was a fun night. Before I let you go, though. I've talked to former teammates of yours, former broadcasters that have covered you, and every single one of them said, I knew Mark Kotze was going to be a manager from your playing days. What do you think you did during your playing days to constitute that Mark Kotze is going to be a manager one day? Well, the way I played the game was for the respect of my peers, mm -hmm. and that's really all that mattered to me. Um, it wasn't about numbers that I put up. It was about winning each and every day, and I think you know, through that maturation process of being on the field, and being with certain teams and having different roles, really. I, I came up as a prospect. Um, I became an everyday player and I transitioned from everyday to a utility guy. And then I was the 25th guy on the roster mm -hmm. my last two years of kind of being the player coach and um, really mentoring and taking younger guys under your wing and, and talking the game and being a leader and being a mentor, um, you know, especially those last four or five years of my career. Um, you know, the, the blessing of playing for a Bobby Cox, a Bruce Bochy, a Terry Francona, and the knowledge that I got from, from them really, it really, I think, helped me and, and kind of paved my path to, to where I sit today. Thank you for your time, Cops. That was fun. Pleasure, Jess. Thanks. <laughs>